Hello, my name is Ryan Williams. I'm a PhD student at Teesside University and I've created a blog called IIT Education where I'm reflecting on my research journey. This is a short video titled Inclusive Technology Enhanced Learning. In education, personalisation should accommodate a learner's educational needs, interests and aptitudes. It can be argued that learners with limited cognitive ability, mega cognitive skills, meta cognitive skills and social skills have benefited from using personalised educational digital technologies. Some researchers argue that as digital technologies emerge and develop, it is common to see affordance, affordances being applied for learners in this group. For example, there was a study conducted in the Toronto area um, where classes had begun using mobile devices in grade seven. Uh, the students selected had limited cognitive ability and the task involved linking words to pictures. On average, from using the mobile devices, language skills increased by about 6%, mathematical skills increased by about 5.5%, Environmental awareness skills increased the most, um, 8%, and social skills increased by about 4%. It can be argued that combining elements of gaming with education in mobile devices develops mega cognitive skills such as independent learning. Children with access to computers at school have also been associated with, re with a reduced likelihood of playing truant at the age of 16. Therefore, it makes sense for behavioural units at schools um, to have a digital technology presence. A further study by Passy in 2011 found that behaviour is influenced positively when learners engage with virtual learning environments and become aware of how technology can be associated with positive outcomes. They also confirmed that teachers who use digital technologies with their learners with behavioural issues have an increased uh, social engagement. In other words, the benefits of technology can go beyond supporting academic performance and can link to an enhanced overall well-being of that individual. However, this does not appear to be acknowledged by policymakers due to the presence of a disconnect between those who govern and those who are the experts. For, exa for example, in an attempt to combat London's knife crime epidemic, the Home Office last year, with support from Sajid Javid, ordered a complete ban on social media for those suspected of knife crime. This is despite research proposing that social media can act as therapy for most young people. It can alleviate stress and anxiety, and it can encourage accountability and conflict re resolution. Learners not physically present in classrooms face particular challenges accessing the curriculum. Non-presence may result from homeschooling, absenteeism, motherhood, in care or homelessness, exclusions or even perhaps being in prison. Digital technologies can enhance educational provision in these instances, as revealed by the research completed by the Alaskan Central School. In this example, teachers worked with non-present students around the state through email, internet, telephone and other digital technologies that are routinely used. When reviewing the results of attainment in homeschooled learners within this area, it was concluded that homeschoolers do well and in most cases usually score above the national average in subject areas and at all grade levels. Learners with physical disabilities may have limited ranges of sensory and physical engagements in the classroom. However, it can be argued that specifically designed access technologies do widen educational opportunities for these learners. There are two types of technology to support young people with physical disabilities. These are assistive technology and access technology. Assistive technologies are designed to help and support an individual with a task. For example, a screen reader or an adapted mouse or using software with some voice recognition. 
Likewise, accessible technologies are designed with a collection of users in mind. And an example of this would be making websites autism friendly. Caroline Weibel from the Partnership of Employment and Accessible Technologies highlight the importance of access in technology, noting that assistive technologies alone will never guarantee access for people with disabilities because tools like websites, software, um, such as those used for recruiting online, um, they really must be designed with accessibility in mind for people who actually use them. Individuals with shyness, emotional distraction or anxiety experience challenges when engaging with education. Some studies have indicated positive emotional features and attributes are supported through the use of digital technologies. For example, a study by Chen and Sun in 2012 explored the use of various digital media with categorised learners. They identified that learners are either visualisers, preferring visual information that emphasises the visual, or verbalised users, which prefer written information and that stresses the verbal. However, several researchers argue that the whole notion of having a link between visual, auditory or physical presence in a learning style um, is quite contentious and is non-conclusive. Non it does raise several doubts within the social science literature. Some social scientists argue that engagement with learning does not currently take into account the learner's perspective enough. Although engagement does involve interaction with peers and adults, it has solely been observed and measured from an adult's perspective. Whether a young person is engaged appears to be reliant upon adult observations and interferences in relation to a typical child's behaviour and internal state. Disengagement in learning arises due to personal characteristics and attributes. Joff and Black in 2012 stated that from a study of 352 mainstream secondary school learners, difficulties in engagement occur at a time when individuals experience social, emotional and behavioural difficulties in their life. In terms of digital technologies, handheld devices are usually a su suitable way to support engagement with learning. Blood et al. in 2011 argued that learners with negative attitudes towards learning can be supported by handheld devices such as mobiles and tablets. Handheld devices appear to reduce the amount of prompting and assistance needed by a teacher during task engagement, as well as encourage time management among students with disabilities. In a broader sense, digital technologies such as e-books have a superior outcome than printed books, including um, things like comprehension, oral responses and reading logs. Living in remote areas of the world, such as rural China, present challenges that can lead to lower levels of attainment. Lee and Ranieri in 2013 studied four schools in China. It was a study that involved 658 learners and they found that learners in rural or migrant schools scored low in metrics such as social support and digital autonomy. As a potential solution, schools began using podcasts and social networking sites to support learning processes. However, achievement was not affected by the preference to learn through these learning tools. And other researchers have argued that the general characteristics of this group need to be considered. For example, autonomous learners will engage under these conditions. However, those who rely on scaffolding techniques may not be able to obtain the desired support. It's all well and good giving a student um, who requires scaffolding or additional support an iPad to support their learning, but they may need um, additional face-to-face -face support. Finally, um, Ranieri argued that computer-supported collaboration learning environments are possible. And they uh, also suggested that a balance between these two types of learning or personalised resources is necessary in order to address the needs of a group separately.
This part of my thesis presents a strong argument for the increased use of tell and social media in education. Thank you for watching.